I think in a way, actually, I've got more self-belief. You've got to have the, the right package underneath you, the right team around. I have my fun, I go motocross and I love it. Well, no, I have a bunless burger, but that's not really a burger. Is it? <laughs> and I like I sit down in my seat a bit and I, in the tranny van, like... <laughs> Chris. <laughs> I mean, just how they were going through with such commitment is mental. Welcome to Cadwell Park. Welcome to Oxford Products, Ducati Racing and Hospitality. More importantly, welcome. Christian Eden. Mate, welcome. Cheers, mate. How are you? Yeah, good, thanks. Um, yeah, steady away. We've already had one race today, so um, that's not been too bad. So, yeah, feel all right. So, not in too bad of a mood to do this. <laughs> There's always an option to bang out whenever you need to. Well, that's it's always difficult, problem. I guess, doing these podcasts on a race weekend, isn't it? Because I guess whoever you're interviewing is like <laughs> either happy or sad or whatever it is from what's been going on. It is. And we try and do them on a Thursday and a Friday. And with it, with um, Nicola not being so, so well yesterday, I, I was quite happy to wait until Alton. I said that to, to Hammy, who's organized this. <laughs> really well bless him um so there was always an option not to do it mate so thank you very much i That's appreciate no it um talk to me about the season so far for you with ultra products to carry racing um <clears throat> difficult one really because we struggled basically is the long and short of it we had a we had a uh, an issue for the first three rounds that was really hard to detect and wasn't anything to do with the team and uh, yeah, we just basically were chasing our tails with that. So it meant that we basically didn't turn up till round four. And I think from then on, we've shown a lot more pace. Um, still missing a little bit of something, I would say. Um, but I think a lot of it's just a knock-on effect from those first few rounds. I think you just miss if you set off behind the behind the game, then you just it's very hard to recover that. And you know, BSB is so intense and so tight that if you just miss that teeny weeny little bit and that little bit of setup time and that little bit of sort of knowing exact, exactly where you're at when you when you at, turn up at a round which i think we are um and that is a lot better now by the way but um yeah i think it's just hard i think it just is difficult so um yes yeah, so those those first th three rounds really done us um sent us up on the garden path with a lot of things because we were trying to chase something that wasn't anything to do with <laughs> what the team were doing and it's just it was frustrating and then I was getting more frustrated in myself as well because obviously my aspirations this year were are still because it's still mathematically possible but to win the championship but it's, it's a massive long shot now but you know it's it's that frustration that plays out and yeah it's been it's been one of them I know what I've achieved previously on a Ducati and that I'm not achieving that right now so you can't help but feel disappointed in that respect and that's kind of how i am at the moment with your experience in in move that around that way if you bring that there you go is that a bit playing with it, yeah is that better yeah. <laughs> when you're pulling your head to one side <laughs> end up with a crick neck for tomorrow <laughs> and that's all my fault <laughs> with all the experience that you have in british superbikes how do you deal with the frustration side of it it's not the first time you've been in this situation in this position as a racer because it's motorcycle racing mm -hmm. it happens but as a rider now with the experience that you've got how do you deal with things these days compared to say five or six years ago uh, i think in a way actually i've got more self-belief than i had done previously until i jumped on the pbm bike there was always that niggling um question of you always think you can do it but you until you prove it in results then it, you know all my times with the with the with the taz team i was always there or thereabouts but i never really sort of was the guy um and then on the pbm bike for two years we battled for the championship until until the last round of the championship so i was like okay now we now we sort of proved it and almost proved it to myself in a way i knew it on the inside but you still need that verification and that verified it um and actually the more that I've been racing the more I realize that it is so much down to everything around you it was a big when I first came into short circuits that was a big learning curve to start with but I'm, I'm understanding that more and more the longer I've been in it because um, coming from off-road like genuinely it's probably like 95% rider and and they're onward certainly for like pure motocross and then supermoto is like probably 90% rider and 10% bike maybe 85 15 but you know like it's that yeah. sort of thing whereas like the short circuits you've just doesn't matter who you are you've got to have the, the right package underneath you the right team around you the right personnel the right equipment on the bike and 
even if they're right, it still has to click together. Of course it does. So <clears throat> there's just so many variables, and and then if you, even if you get, do get all your variables right, everyone else is also trying to get their variables right, and sometimes you do have to, have to accept that people are better than you on the day, so that, that does happen. Um, but yeah, I think over time I've just under, learned to understand a little bit more that I, I do have it, it's there just we've got to unlock it and kind of the, that's kind of the frustration at this sort of second part of this season that there's i do still feel there's a little bit of something missing and that's not me saying by the way that it's the bike but it's just something that needs to click between me and the bike or you know that me and the setup or something there's just something and it's so tiny but it's massive because that last little bit is is enormous so that tiny last little bit is is the bit that you need and it's just we've not quite got there um and then we've also had rounds that are like <clears throat> like thruxton for example was probably the best round we had this year and i finished 13th 7th and 8th or i don't know some rubbish but due to how close the championship is i could have had three certainly two podiums i think there uh, a track that's really not a ducati track supposedly and that the, they brought a hard tire which doesn't help us and Basically, everything was against us, and I think we did a great job, but just the results don't show it. <clears throat> so it was the first time that we had the beating of the other, the other bike, the other Ducatis all weekend, and um, and it's but so it's all. I sort of kind of feel like we got the most out of the package, but then I know I didn't because we didn't get the result that warranted it. So I know I had the pace to get on the podium, but I didn't make it happen because I did a really poor job in qualifying, and I take that on the chin as, as my thing, and that just sets the that sets the tone for the weekend because the. BSB is just so close. You know, we're we're currently here, sat here at Cadwell. It's probably the most technical circuit on the calendar, and we've got like 16 riders within 0.8 of a second. You know, it's it's pretty crazy. Everyone's on different bikes. Everyone has different riding styles, different um, you know parts on. Even if you have got the same bike, you've got different parts on that bike. Different people setting it up. Different electronic strategies. Different riders. <laughs> And we're all going around basically at the same speed. You know, it's pretty crazy actually when you think when you put all that together. When you put all that together, there's so many variations and variables, and yet you go around the track <laughs> like three and a half kilometer track within less than a second. Sixteen of you. Yeah, it's nuts. And that's the beauty of what we do, or what nah, you do, not what we do. We just I don't think talk it's about it. I hate it. It's, it's frustrating. <laughs> When it goes well, it's really. If you cast your mind back to to Snetterton a couple of seasons ago, that feeling. Yeah, yeah, and and genuinely, like, so I just finished then seventh in that race, two point four off the win. You know, it's like if I'd finish on the podium, I'd be like, oh, mint, great race. You know, it's but it's almost frustrating being that close. You you want to be closer to the front, but it's almost more frustrating in a way. <laughs> You'd rather, would you rather be further away then? I definitely that? wouldn't. But, you know, no. it's almost that it's tangibly close right yeah. now. Um, but that is just that last little bit that I think there's just something not quite clicked and we've not quite got there. When when that piece clicks, mm -hmm. how it, it, is there more to come from Christian Eden? Or are you <clears throat> riding to the best that you can ride with the package that you have at the moment? I think every rider is always riding to the best of their abilities with what they've got. You know, we see we see riders that fluctuate quite a lot if they feel good or if they don't feel good and we have other riders that don't fluctuate too much whether they're feeling on the best form or the worst form but this is a confidence sport you know racing a bike is is a lot about of course it's about feel but it's about confidence of how much you well, it's, but it's about sensation if you had if all them graphs we've got on them computers and laptops you know if you had a graph for feel you would win everything because if you could make that if you can feel exactly what's going on underneath you and you can make the most of what's going on then You've got it made. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I don't think there's a... I'm always learning. You know, I've been about a reasonable amount of time now. So, but I just... I do think you're always learning. You're always progressing. There's always something more to understand and something more to come. We've got... I've got Tommy's data from last year to look through if I, if I want to, um, which I quite in, like to do um, where possible, especially if there's somewhere where he was doing better than me last year. We, yeah. we ride quite differently. Um, so... Yeah, I think there's there's always something that you can learn. The the sport is always evolving. Um, so yeah, it's, I'm riding the best I can at the moment. Is that the best of me? I don't know. Because <laughs> until yeah, it's that. Yeah. yeah, I genuinely don't know. I feel like I couldn't go any harder. You know, like that is the max. I don't I don't have any more to give. There's not like a secret locker of speed another, another five percent yeah because if it if it if it was there then uh, trust me i'd oh no doubt in it at all i'd, I'd have the key and I'd, I'd unlock the safe do you know what i mean but <laughs> the yeah. frustrations might subside at the moment i feel like, like this is where we're at yeah. um and yeah 
this is where at this current moment in time where we're at is not bad but not bad is also by definition not good <laughs> so so the more the closer you get the more tangible it becomes you see you're on the coattails of of the guys ahead of you and you, yeah. you can see the podium yeah it's yeah exactly there. yeah i mean we like we pulled two podiums at brands and that was good that was really good because um we're just good for the team good yeah. for the morale you know it's the, the team expects podiums i expect podiums ducati expects podiums it's it's what we're all here for that's where you the sponsors get their real tv time and you know that's that's what we're here for nobody's kind of here to to roll around in whatever place and as much as you go oh yeah we were we were close to a podium or we were close to whatever then close isn't isn't quite right so close that's that's kind of how that's kind of how it is at the moment you know it's it's going all right but that's so boring isn't it <laughs> It's, it's a, it, but it is it's such a tough sport and trying to bring that sense across to our viewers and listeners of just like you said that it the, and i really like the 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 um the explanation that you gave that you have four or five different manufacturers with different mechanics of different um abilities uh -huh. and knowledge and data engineers and everything else but you're still like a nuts cock off each other mm -hmm. It, it, when you put it that way, you suddenly sit back and you go, fuck, yeah, you're right. And it, we all love watching you guys go around. It's what we're here for. Is it, It's the greatest sport in the world for fans. But the frustration that comes across from the riders, because this is your job, this is what you do. Mm -hmm. And when it's not going right, it it is difficult to enjoy it. Yeah, it is. And <clears throat> that's the difficult thing with, with racing. You're like, actually, I don't think anyone that, gets into racing gets into racing because they want to make a career you don't start racing or you don't start riding bikes shall we say because i'm going to be the next motor gp world champion you start riding bikes because you go and ride in a field on a on a dirt bike or whatever it is that you do and you're like this is cool you know like whatever it is i enjoy this and then <clears throat> some of you are quite good at it and you have a talent and then it becomes a job and then actually most of the fun goes away from it because you're not doing it just to dick about in a field and have fun i have my fun i go motocross and i love it yeah that's way more fun than being here and i don't mean that in a bad way <laughs> hammy's there chuckling away in the background <laughs> but it, you know it's the truth you know yeah, like, exactly it's, it's not necessarily fun being here you know this is the job and it's, yeah. there's a lot of pressure on there's a lot of expectation there's i mean we're sat in this hospitality unit this is all this will be full tomorrow full of people watching me expecting to pull a result out and um I don't necessarily feel the, the pressure from that because the pressure on myself outweighs all of that but it does take away a lot of the enjoyment um my mum's usually pretty good because like i do you, you can't help but get downs maybe not the word but you can't help but be really i don't know it's, it's hard to lose sight of what's a good result and what's a bad result sometimes because obviously top top spot is always the goal so always. so where do you wherever you lie after that how good is that it depends on the scenario but then yeah you know like sometimes i have a bit of a grim face on me and like mum will sort of say like just remember how lucky you are to be in the position you're in and it is true you know like you get paid to do your hobby um but it's different i gotta admit it's different no I, I agree completely with that and that's yeah you have gratitude for what you do 100 percent. but it doesn't make it any less i'm very i'm difficult. super i don't think i'm lucky because i don't think anyone in this paddock is lucky to be in the that's why i use gratitude you're rather very than you're lucky. very fortunate that's because you've word. made um you've had the opportunities to to do what you do but luck doesn't come into it hard work and perseverance and a lot of sacrifice from a lot of people gets you to the position of being in here but nobody's lucky to do what they're doing 100 percent hard work sacrifice and opportunity mm -hmm. and not just from the person in, not, not, certainly not just actually the sacrifice tends to be often more from those around the rider it's you know there's a lot of sacrifice from families and stuff like that um but yeah we are fortunate to be in this situation i do feel very fortunate to be here so sometimes you do have to remind yourself just do you know what it's cool it's forty thousand people all waving and cheering not necessarily for me but you know that might be there's about six out. people out there cheering for me that I know. Don't you start <laughs> doing yourself down, Eden. No, you know I mean? I'm not having this. I'm not having you coming on here and doing yourself down. That's are, not like, right. You are fortunate. Aren't you? It's pretty cool. You know, actually, when you think, it, it you know, like, there's worse ways to earn a living. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Much worse ways. 100% there is. Exactly so, yeah, that. So, right. you know, there's cool. people out there. This yeah. is it. That's the smile Super I wanted. Cool. It's, it's exactly the right thing. I just wish I was doing a bit better. You know, like, I don't know. Yesterday, we were having a conversation about Cress, and I just... Actually, that's how I feel at the moment. I feel like I'm a bit cress. Like I'm, I'm in the egg mayo party, but I'm not really bringing anything to it. 
Do you know that I'm, I'm there? <laughs> I, I get it completely, yeah. You wouldn't really notice if I wasn't there right now. You know, like if Chris oh, was no. omitted from the... It's not. I'm not having that. Really? Yeah, 100%. I am not. That's it. From your point, I understand that. I'd completely. rather be egg or mayo. I don't want to be Chris. Okay, let's go back to brands. Right. Okay. Yeah. Podium. Yeah. She stood up there. Mm -hmm. You go like, this is what we do. Yeah. We can do this. Mm -hmm. Those are the moments that carry you forward. I so 100%. then, so then, therefore, Chris deserves to be with egg mayo, with the egg and the mayo. Yeah. You deserve to be there. I want to be the bun. You can't have a butty without the bun, can you? You can have a burger without the bun, though. Can you? Yeah, just use knife for. Well, no, I have a bunless burger, but that's not really a burger, is it? It's just it's a burger it's patty. Just, it's just beef. <laughs> it's just beef in a circle. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, this is where the podcast goes, isn't it, mate? We're not gonna... <laughs> I want to keep you smiling. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> well, when you, um, I, I primed you for this one earlier. You know this. Um, when you're driving home with the family on Sunday night, Monday morning, whichever one it is from Brands Hatch at the end of the season, when you look back, what would make it a satisfactory season for you? I think now, given the start of the season that we've had, I think if we can really nail a good string of podiums, because we're more than capable of it, um, <clears throat> pretty much the season, if you could look at it as a, as a big picture, no matter what happens from here on in, it's probably going to be a disappointment. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of a bit of a readjustment of the goals. Um, so yeah, if I can start to nail what I think we deserve, deserve is totally wrong, what I think we're capable of, then at least I can be content. And to be fair, I always, almost always go home content from a weekend because I judge my performance on could I have given more and don't recall really a, a weekend where I haven't couldn't have given any more. Um, you always have your sort of little regrets, like I say at Thruxton, I just regret the poor qualifying and you know certain things. But generally, I go home not happy is not right, but you know like content that I've given everything that I've got. Because um, I think as long as you give everything you've got, then and you left nothing else on the table, then what what can you be sort of disappointed at? I don't think you can. So that's so yeah, that's kind of my philosophy on it. So I just I always give everything I've got, regardless of the situation, regardless of whether I like my bike or don't like my bike, whether I'm happy, sad, indifferent, whether it's wet, dry, whatever it is, give your best. Then it's, it's the personal side, isn't it? It's yes. the personal it's what's personal to you, because then you've got to go to sleep with that at night. Yeah, exactly. And you've I've, got, I've got to, to be comfortable with exactly. yourself. I've got to be comfortable with myself, and I know that I couldn't go to sleep at night properly if I knew that I was just like rolling around, you know, just collecting a paycheck and not doing the right thing. You're never going to do that. That's not in your makeup. No, and the minute it's not in any rider's makeup. No, it's not. Because and you're think, sat here. And I think the the, conversations any, any riders that do happen like that, like that, they don't then last very long. No. And I think they then realise that that's it. And if my mindset ever changes, then that'll be. I'll just go. Do you know what? I'm not going to waste anyone's time. <laughs> we'll be away. You know? Do you know what I mean? There's no yeah. point. I was talking to Carl Ride yesterday, and he was. He's grown up a bit this year. A lot. You've spoken to Kyle. You're good friends with Kyle, mm -hmm. and he said exactly the same thing that. I asked him about frustrations of the season because I know last year there were frustrating points and he's been in a little bit of a dip of the last before today, the last couple of rate the last couple of rounds. And like what do you do to and the same question I had to you about about sort of trying to mitigate that frustration. And he said exactly the same thing. It's as long as I have given my best, I know I couldn't do any more. Mm -hmm. I'm comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. I'm comfortable in my own skin. I can do that. And I think that's that's something that is really not comforting, but reassuring to hear, especially from a fan's perspective. And that's what I am. I'm lucky enough that I do a podcast. And to hear that, that you can give what you give, but you can actually be comfortable and be in the moment for it is, is quite an art. Yeah, it is. And you, you, I think you just have to be accepting of that. You know, sport, there's only ever one winner. So... There's, okay, there's a short, there's a small field now this weekend, but normally there's like one guy goes unhappy and the rest not the so rest much. don't. So or less happy, you know. So yeah, that's that's sport. That's the nature of it. So of course it is. And then, <clears throat> but then that guy that won on the Sunday knows that he can't rest on his laurels because everyone's working hard on the Monday to make sure at the next round that doesn't happen. So that's how it is. Well, we've seen how things are changing in the championship now. That 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 Tommy went on such a good run leading the championship the last couple of rounds haven't really sort of fallen in his favor mm -hmm. and the, the the rest of the field are closing in and the points change after this round as well 
So there's no way he was resting on his laurels, but things are changing. Glenn took the spoils today, but it, you know you might be on the podium tomorrow yeah. ahead of Glenn, and you might be top Ducati tomorrow. And it and it really doesn't take much. And the, the way the championship is, you know, you see how close the field is. Um, like the top eight today were, were we maybe had a bit of a jump on everyone else, but certainly the way championship goes, actually, it's different to a lot of other championships. If you look at, say, let's... MotoGP is maybe a bit different, but certainly World Two Pack at the moment, there's maybe like the three that are going to be away. So if you've got a buffer in that championship, then you know you're only going to get beaten by maybe two people because that's your position. Yeah, exactly that. Whereas BSB, you've got a chance to maybe... It'd be out the points if you really have a pretty bum round. Well, to be fair, Tommy nearly was at Thruxton. So that's how easy it happens uh, because of... The nature of the championship, it shows how easy it is with the regulations that it'll suit a different manufacturer or whatever it is, or for a different circuit or different, you know, we had a different compound attire at Thruxton. I think that changed things a lot. Um, but it shows how um, finely balanced the series is and how quickly that can change. And, you know, that's that's why what, uh, what I spoke about before, about being a bit more aware of how much external factors have a, a play. I'm far more aware of that now. And... I can understand those things that, that happen differently. Is, is, is it maturing? I don't want to mature. That's, <laughs> that's rubbish. I, I knew that was me the only reply to that. I don't ever want to see you mature, <laughs> ever. <laughs> right, that's the racing thing. Done. We're done with that now. That's fine. So we can now relax. Cool. Because we have, um, uh, what's that, 21? Bearing in mind that's Christian's number. Was that on purpose? Yeah. 21 questions. Now, we won't, I'm not going to give you all 21, but number 21. Oh, I see. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's a question. Oh, you've got numbered questions. Ah, I've got no oh, so, okay. I see. So what we have now. So I don't explain. know if you know I work on another podcast, but we don't, we don't, Do prep, really? we don't prep questions. <laughs> really? <laughs> Dom's the main guy. We don't, <laughs> we don't do prep. I actually took a notepad. You, you're to all really one. busy. <laughs> there was so nothing in it. No. I took an empty notepad. Man, I've got, I've like got a lot to learn. Look at that. It's full of stuff. <laughs> I've got like, full of notes. all sorts. And I've got a career and history and all sorts in here. But, you know, that's just that's just my way of doing it. Just my way of Love doing it. Love it. So we have, um, at the end, at the, towards the end of each chat, because I promise I wouldn't keep you long. Um, no, Wilf's waiting, tapping his fingers down <laughs> in the truck now. <laughs> Where is he? It'd be another couple of minutes. It's fine. Where the fuck is he? Keep doing that. It sounds like the starts of Queen and Flash. <laughs> Flash. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Twenty-one. We said, didn't we? And that this one might this might enlighten us to a few things. Um, if you could make a, a, a certain decision again, what would it be? Don't know. These are the kind of questions. Look at that. I genuinely don't know. I don't think I've got any re regrets. What in... decision would you change if you could, is the, the way I've written the question. <sighs> I, didn't, I, don't, I don't know. The other, well, the other day I went to McDonald's and I had a wrap of the day, but it oh. wasn't the one I wanted. But so, I decided because it was cheaper than the other one. So that's probably the biggest decision that I got wrong. You know. I should have paid the extra two pound fifty and got the wrap I wanted, rather than the fucking firecracker, which oh. burnt my mouth. And I bought two of them, and then I had to get through them. You're not going to waste. I hated it. Well, exactly, but I hated every mouthful of it. But I'd spent the money. That's fair. See, it yeah. doesn't have to be a deep question, but it's yeah. that's the right answer. I like that. That was my that was my way home, Mackies. You know, like you treat yourself. Yeah. Look forward to it. I get to. I ruined that. it. <laughs> it's nothing worse. It's like when you order like. Um, a box of six nuggets, right? Mm -hmm. If you turn the nine box upside down, it says six. So we're all right. It's like six plus that. <laughs> but then you realize that they haven't put the ketchup in. So you're going up the M6 eating dry nuggets. <laughs> That's the sort of thing that rounds off your week. You're like, for fuck's sake. <laughs> so now I always check before I drive off. Which Good I probably should have done that before. Yeah, don't look at me like that going, why didn't you check before you left? <laughs> what was that, seven? How do you, is it got a random number generator? Oh yeah, eighteen next. Uh, okay, we'll do that. I can do Why that. Why does that one. say Dick Roller on there? <laughs> it says Dick Roller. What's the Dick Roller? Does it say Dick? No, roller? it says Dice Roller. Oh. <laughs> I thought you had some like extension tool that I didn't know about. Mate, I was looking forward to tonight. This was going to be wrapped up really quickly. 
<laughs> um, Richard Eden, what's your hidden talent? Um, I can ride a unicycle really badly. Not badly? Yeah. Okay. Which kind of means I can't ride a unicycle. <laughs> That's probably not really a hidden talent, is it? <laughs> yeah, it's so hidden I don't know it's there. <laughs> okay, we'll take the unicycle. Is it 18? Uh, what annoys you most in life? Celery. Why? Well, because it just ruins any salad. Salads are pretty bad to start with, and then you put celery in it. It's like everything tastes of celery. And that stringiness that comes with it's just it. Minging. It's, yeah. It's I got agree. no no value in life at all. Yeah. <laughs> it's like them little fish on a pizza. Oh no, we're not doing. It's like putting pineapple. It's very foody. This. I keep talking about food. I've just had my dinner as well. <laughs> I enjoyed it. So it was good. Yeah. <laughs> there was no. What are they called? Anchovies. That's it. Oh, capers. No, anchovies. Oh, they are anchovies. Yeah. Do you have pineapple on the pizza? Yeah. Five a day. Don't get <laughs> It's true. What have you got? Uh, 26. So these, these have gone to different different style of questions now. Okay. So 26. Oh, we had this with... Who did you have this with? Jack. Jack Kennedy last night. You're in the car. Mm -hmm. You're on your own. Mm -hmm. Turned up to 11. Mm -hmm. What are you singing? Don't Stop Me Now by Queen. Ah, oh, I can see that as well. Love it. Love it. We're feeling some like some power ballads and driving music because Jack was saying he was going for 80s and you're like yeah. Def Leppard and things like that, <laughs> but a bit of Queen, like some proper driving music. Either that or I like a little bit of ghetto music, I feel like, because I'm so like, oh. I'm, I haven't got any facial hair. I feel a bit wimpy. So like I just go proper like... <laughs> And I like I sit down in my seat a bit and I, in the tranny van, like. <laughs> <laughs> say all them bad words. And you put the music on as well. Fuck shit, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I get, can you do a video for that as well and send it to us and we can put that on the way, on the way home tomorrow night and I'll stitch it into the. But video. I only do it in the countryside in case someone like notices me. <laughs> <laughs> like a few sheep in the field going what the fuck is he doing he's back again lads he's back can we change that because Jack Kennedy did that last night that was his number um okay what's the most random fact you know um don't know any facts of course you do I don't you do you don't be giving me I some of that know. I can't answer that I don't know Oh, that's doing another Sorry. One. 20 what? Six. Wasn't that before? 26. Yeah, I okay, can't, uh, hang on. Um, <laughs> okay, now I'm going to do this one. I haven't asked this one before. What's your strongest opinion on something that isn't really that important? Uh, I don't think I'm too opinionated. Oh, Christian. I'm really not. I'm, I told you I'm Chris. <laughs> yeah. You're cressing an egg mayo crusty, sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> All right, what's the weirdest thing you've ever eaten? Cress. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I'm try and find something. <laughs> if I pick number nine, yeah. what's the one food you could never give up? Cress. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my days, this is great. <laughs> this is the crash show. I absolutely love this. How are we doing for time? What are we on? 28 minutes. 28 minutes. We said half an hour ish, didn't we? <laughs> Christian Hidden, what's the one item you can't live without? Hey, we are good. If you had one. <laughs> Cress has never been such a, such a wonderful subject on the podcast. I didn't realize you could answer so many questions <laughs> Cress. with Cress. It's quite impressive. You can stitch that into your podcast as well if you like, because that's just brilliant. I can't even. Okay, who's your celebrity crush? Um, what's that one out of Transformers? Megan Fox. No, the guy. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I want to do? Can we just start this again and not fucking talk about motorcycle racing and just do this? <laughs> Your celebrity crush is Shia LaBeouf. Who? The bloke. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> so, yeah, now you're pretending yeah. like you know what it's about. <laughs> oh, man. There's an answer to Crest for this one as well. Pick another one. If you could only invent something, what would it be? Mobile phone. Good answer. Yeah, they did. Like, you can't live without them, but flip. They're just addictive, aren't they? Yes. They and the world revolved just perfectly without them, so... We did all right without them for a while, didn't 100%. We? Mobile phone. Absolutely that. I'm going to do one more of these and then go for the uh, the, the higher car story. Uh, <laughs> I'll go for number 16. Legs or boobs? What do you prefer? Mm. Don't you dare say, Chris. <laughs> Uh, don't know, really. I kind of like someone who's got both. It's useful. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you like the bloke out of Transformers. So I have to say legs then, won't I? You go legs, yeah. yeah. Not quite as hairy. Yeah. <laughs> <You> keep... <laughs> Honestly, mate, why did we say we'd only do this for half an hour? Because this could just go on forever. We've got like 60-odd questions. <laughs> We're not going to do that. Um when we had you on the show, I thought, oh, when it was, 18 months ago, maybe something like that? Yeah, it could have been. Just before you started with Hawk. Um, I asked you then, but it, that was back on the audio show, and now we're doing video for our <laughs> great viewers and our new audio listeners as well. Final two questions of any show. And you've raced all over the place. You've sort of, most of the great tracks across mm -hmm. the world. What, the first question in two parts, what's your favorite corner and why? Um. I don't know the name of the corner, but there was a corner in uh, Istanbul Park, I think is the track. They, didn't, they don't race it. That, I don't think they race it anymore. Um, and it was when I was doing World Supersport. And yeah, it's right near the end of the course. And it's just a balls out corner. And on a Supersport bike, it is pinned. But it took me three days to do it pinned. It was like flipping just fully. It was a full commitment sort of corner. And then when you do it, it was, it was all right. But you know, like it was proper it was just a mega corner you sort of came down it was almost like it had a bit of a mine shaft sort of feel to it and there's a big compression in the bottom and it was just a mega it was just a beautifully rounded nice corner real nice loads of runoff so it didn't well it always matters if you crash but it was not too bad you got a bit of a chance if you got a fair bit of runoff but then having said that like last year i went and did uh spa and almost every corner on that track is unreal now so there's like the last the last bit that you come through at spa Frankshamp, there's and again, I don't know what the corner's called, but it's like there's, there's a double apex left-hander and it is just insane. Like, it's crazy. And there's no runoff. Like, the bit was like, it's just, it's a big issue if you crash there. Oh. And it, But it's just insane. Like, the it was wet in the race, even in the in the nighttime, and just how they were going through with such commitment. It's mental. Mega, mega, mega corner. How much do you enjoy the endurance side? Love it. Yeah, I really... It's something that I've been like looking into and sort of half thinking about for a while and what to do. And um, I actually could have had the opportunity to race Suzuka this year. Actually, Dan Linfoot phoned up last minute. He'd got a real plum deal on a Suzuki. Um, on it was actually last year's Yoshi bike. Um, so I that's the bike I rode last year as fourth rider, which is a terrible job by the way. Being reserve rider in endurance is an awful job. I can't imagine. Um, <clears throat> but the yeah, Dan was like, oh do you think you can and i was like i'll phone wilf because i'd spoke to wilf um before the season because I, I i i was keen to do some world endurance um and i kind of promised him that i would only do it on a ducati uh on pirelli's because it can easily sort of mess about with what you're already doing yeah so i didn't want that and i also thought that it i didn't want that either because you've got to concentrate um so yeah even though it was a Suzuki on Bridgestones. I still phoned him up and asked. <laughs> this opportunity. But to be fair, That's what we go back to about opportunity. <laughs> to be fair to him, he said yes. And then, yeah, last minute, I sort of decided it's not the thing to do. And and it's a shame because actually Dan was fourth, I think, in that race, was, like yeah. him and his teammate. So it was proper awesome run. But yeah, I really like it. It's a different way. It, people think that it's um, you ride slower, but you pretty much don't. You maybe knock a, a percent of a percent off, but fuck they go fast you know like it is insane how quick they go and there you do there's a there's a huge difference there in in bikes and teams and stuff so like i was on a plum bike last year uh as reserve rider so even as reserve i was one of the quicker guys even without much track time and all that but mainly because of my bike was plum um 
so yeah there's a huge difference there um but it's a good series i enjoy it and i actually enjoy the difference of the challenge um <clears throat> i could have signed for a full season last year instead of signing for hawk you know i could have gone to the the ducati world endurance team but i wasn't ready to make that step to being a team player i'm not ready for that yet i want to achieve if i can i want to achieve what i can achieve personally um before i start doing it as a group so i like that, that was the, the plan so poor old linny has to go out to suzuka and like plow his own furrow with just two of them yeah yeah so that was the thing <laughs> so i think they just did a bit of say like money saving sort of thing and they were like so, sorry boys it's yeah, just that's the two pretty of you. much the, like <laughs> linny was half like he's he's kind of half knew what was happening sort of thing he went yeah i think they're just going to make two of us ride and then sure thing like i was messaging him because like i get on real well with dan he's he's a proper proper guy and um yeah I, I did feel sorry for him but i even like i said i was at spa last year with the for the world endurance and i, I watched the 24 hours of it and i swear he did 22 hours for his team you know like i never once did i see him not go past on his bike i was like after i'm like dude like because i took him back to the we traveled back together and i was like mate did anyone else actually do a stint you know like <laughs> it was always down on the bike <laughs> So yeah, he's amazing. He's an amazing endurance rider. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I like the endurance scene. Um, there's not that many great teams, um, so it's kind of a bit of a weird setup. You know, you've really got to be in the. T it's probably four proper proper team, maybe five, five, maybe six. But you know, yeah. like it's sure it's a small top tier of teams. But having said that, those six teams have three riders, sometimes four. Yeah. So. There are rides available, but it's not something that at the moment that I'm looking at because, like I said, I had the opportunity last year and chose not to. It'd be fair to say you don't want to be seen to be putting, doing like Westy did, putting one foot out of the, the door in BSB and you, no, you've got to keep both feet both to, feet in No, the... to be fair, last year it was a, it was to do that and nothing else. That okay. Was the, yeah, no, the, the deal was that I'd go and ride that. And that that was, was it? it? Yeah, yeah. That was the, 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 the possibility last year was that. Um, <clears throat> to be fair, because I was a bit... I was a bit peed off at the end of last year with the whole situation that went on. The, sorry, the year before. Yes. Um, so I just had a bit of one of them like, oh, fuck it moments where I was like, I'm just going to leave. Nobody, nobody's interested. Nobody, nobody really cares. When you leave, nobody really cares, to be fair. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you are. You know, like Casey Stone leaves MotoGP. Everyone goes, oh, that's terrible. Then 10 minutes later, someone else on his bike. Nobody cares. That's, how, that's, that's the world. You know, it's not being like funny about it. Nobody, genuinely nobody cares. <laughs> Once you're out, there's always someone to fill the place. So, um, yeah, I just had a bit of a no-fuck-it moment. And then, actually, when I thought about it, I was like, nah, I still want to achieve stuff. I still want to achieve what I set out to achieve when I came into this paddock. And so I'm still chasing that dream. And keep doing it. <laughs> I'm trying. I know you can't do anything about it, but listen to the song. Yeah? Somebody's watching. Band's playing. The band's playing, but they're playing ever long. So somebody's watching on from up there somewhere. Um, final question. Mm-hmm. Tell me your best hire car story. I think I gave you the Hutchie one, which basically you don't ever get in a hire car with Hutchie. <laughs> Not really a story. It's just, just danger. Don't. It's just danger. <laughs> That's just a fact. From the beginning. <laughs> yeah, no, probably the best one was, um, it wasn't my hire car. I had nothing to do with it, really. I was watching with great interest, but um, the last round of World Supermoto was uh, years and years ago. It was on not a pier but like a fucking where do ships pull in like a, a port yeah in a port yeah so it was on the like the track was on the port in in greece and um most of the guys had took out the fully comprehensive insurance for that and two of the cars ended up in the sea <laughs> which was quite impressive really <laughs> that's a new one we've not had that yeah. before not my high car but it was pretty, no, but it's, it's pretty to watch cool it to was see. quite interesting <laughs> sit there smug watching yeah. guys not my insurance i don't care i also did go and jump in but i had my boots on oh and i like nearly died because <laughs> yeah i was sinking like if you if you ain't got your feet to flap you know like a and they're gonna fill up which is a bit of weight well, it's a bit of extra weight anyway so heavy. i was like <laughs> flapping me flipping alpine star boots about and they weren't doing anything i was going down instead of up <laughs> oh man christian i've got to say thank you Cheers. Absolutely brilliant. Love that from the start. The, the, the motorcycle racing bit is difficult. We yeah, understand that. A bit serious, that wasn't it? A little bit, bit serious, but I think we pulled it hopefully, back. Hopefully people don't switch off they won't. after that. They won't because they're interested, mate. They really are. And we find that more and more. It's because it's true. You get the, the TV interviews and things like that. And the, what we try and do is, I've said this before, Chasing the Racing could interview um, Car Ride. I could interview Car Ride on the same day 
and we could put two completely different shows out. Mm -hmm. And that's the beauty of what we do. And that's why we, it works so well together. Um, but I don't even need to thank you for your honesty because I know what, I know you well enough, mate. So it's just been a pleasure to sit with you and talk it through. I said we wouldn't keep you too long. We haven't. So, ladies and gentlemen, Christian Eden. Thank you.